Welcome to Advanced Instruments training on the GPR 1200 PPM Portable Auction Analyzer. Today we'll be going over some of the key functions of this analyzer as well as calibration. Uh, thank you for your time in advance and let's get started. We will now go over the basic components of the standard GPR 1200. When we see the unit, it will appear as so. The components will be the integral bypass valve, integral flow meter, and integral flow valve. A key feature of this analyzer is the integral bypass valve. Currently, the analyzer in bypass, ensuring that the sensor that is installed during shipment is preserved from ambient air. The sensor is sealed both on the inlet and the outlet, preventing any gases to expose to the sensor. During storage and transportation, the analyzer will be in bypass mode. You will connect at the sample inlet and flow your gas through the analyzer. You will adjust the flow rate with the flow valve and we recommend a flow rate of 1.5 SCFH. Once flow has been established to the analyzer and has been purged out for a few minutes, you will switch from bypass to sample. The sensor will respond accordingly as the flow goes across the sensor head and your reading will be shown. Once the reading is recorded and made note of, you will switch the analyzer back to bypass mode. This again ensures the life of the sensor and will make taking multiple readings easier throughout the day. Again, during transportation and storage, the analyzer must be in bypass mode to ensure the safety of the sensor. Those are the basic components of the GPR 1200 oxygen analyzer. We will now perform a air calibration on the GPR 1200. When you receive the GPR 1200, the oxygen sensor will come installed inside the analyzer, inside the sensor housing. For demonstration purposes, we have removed the sensor housing from the interior of the analyzer. However, when you have the unit, this housing will be plumbed inside the analyzer. To remove the sensor and expose it to air, we loosen the fittings at the bottom of the sensor housing, rotate the top sensor housing, and slide off. As you can see, we have the sensor inside the analyzer and the top housing. The sensor will have a gold-plated bottom that corresponds to the gold pins at the top sensor housing. We'll place the sensor inside as so to mate the two gold parts and hold the sensor firmly in with two fingers on the edges, avoiding the center of the sensor. We will now wait for the reading to stabilize for the oxygen sensor. For a brand new sensor, the oxygen reading should be anywhere between 17% to 25%. These will be acceptable ranges for calibration. As you can see, the sensor has responded and we will now select menu to go into the main menu. And scroll down to calibration. We select enter and are taken to the main calibration screen. Prior to doing a span calibration, we will perform a default span and a default zero. This clears off any prior calibrations done to the sensor and resets it to default settings. We select enter on default span, and as you can see, we are prompted with factory default set. We repeat this with default zero, and again, prompted with factory default set. This is, shows us that the sensor has a raw output now and any calibrations have been removed. We scroll up to span calibrate, and select enter. Since this is an air calibration, we'll hit the percent. However, if you are doing a span calibration with certified span gas, you'll scroll down to PPM. We select enter on percent. And as a default value, we have 20.9, fractional percent of oxygen in dry air. If we were to change this, we select up or down to change the value and enter to move over. Once we have set the value, we are taken to the live reading screen. Here we have a live reading of the oxygen sensor and have the option to hit enter for calibration, menu to abort. This is to ensure that the reading is stable and not fluctuating. As you can see here, the reading is stable. We select enter. We are prompted if this is a new sensor. Up or down for no and yes. Since this is a new sensor, we'll hit yes and we are prompted to confirm this selection. Again, yes. 
we are now seeing that calibration has passed. We will then be taken to the main menu and show the value of 20.9, the sensor in ambient air. We will now go over the range options. On the main menu, go to select range and hit enter. As you can see here, we have the five standard default ranges, 10, 100, 1000 parts per million, 1%, and 25%. Currently, analyzer is in auto ranging and at 25% indicated by the two dots. If we were to like to select a fixed range and lock it as a manual range, say for 1000 parts per million, we scroll down and select enter. As you can now see on the screen, it is manual sampling mode at 1,000 parts per million. Currently the analyzer is reading 1,125 and over ranging. This indicates that the sensor is above the given range and the range will read 12.5% higher than the limit of 1,000 for this. We go back to menu, enter on select range, go back to auto ranging, and the analyzer will auto range back to the 25% range. You can manually fix your range through the select range option and manually fix your zero to one volt as well. We'll now go over system options in the main menu. Select enter and we have security and define ranges. We'll first go over security. In the security menu, you can set a passcode, which is a four digit value used to lock the analyzer. Highlight select passcode and you enter your new passcode for the analyzer. Default is set as 111. You hit up or down to change the value and enter to scroll over. Once your passcode is set, go to passcode lock and select enter. This will lock the analyzer down and anybody that would like to enter the main menu is required to enter the four digit passcode lock. You can also set an auto lock option, select enter and set a delay in minutes. This allows the analyzer to auto lock itself with the passcode after a certain amount of minutes from being idle. We are back to the system options menu and we'll go over define ranges. We have edit ranges, default range, default range delay, and out of range. Under the edit range options, we have our five standard ranges, which can be user configurable. Be sure to note that the ranges cannot be adjusted below the minimum factory default range, nor above the maximum factory default range, nor can the ranges overlap as well. We select enter on 1000. We will change it to a parts per million value. And again, up or down to change the value. Enter to scroll over. This options allows all five user ranges to be changed. We also have the default range option, which is currently off. If we select enter, we will go through the five default ranges or user ranges that were set, and we can set a default range. This will allow the analyzer to automatically go to a certain range when idle and stay defaulted at that value. This is to ensure a manual range is locked for a zero to one volt. We also have a default delay. This is a delay set in minutes for the default range to be set once the analyzer is idle. And we also have an out of range option. This is your output value and is currently unlocked, which means it is set to the current range the analyzer is in. However, you can lock your range at say 1000 parts per million and have your output stay at 1000 parts per million despite what the value is shown on screen. Again, enter to scroll through the various ranges. We are now back to the main menu, and that was system options. We'll now go over the view history option on the main menu. Scroll down and select enter. On the view history menu, you can see the max PPM, the min PPM, and the average PPM of the current sensor installed. This history is reset every time a new sensor is installed. You also have a sensor timer and a span timer. This shows the amount of time the sensor has been in service and the amount of days that the sensor has last been spanned. Again, this history is reset every time a new sensor is installed or it can be reset by the user by hitting enter on the view history menu. 
as seen here. Once you hit enter, you're prompted if you want to reset history. You can select yes or no with up or down menus. Enter on yes, and as you can see, the view history menu was reset, and all current values are the current value of the sensor as of now. That was the view history option for the GPR 1200 auction analyzer. And that concludes training on the GPR 1200 PPM auction analyzer. If you have any further questions on this analyzer or any other of our auction analyzers or sensors, please feel free to contact us at the factory at area code 909-392-6900. Again, thank you for your time and have a great day.